Number 10. It always fails. If you have ever wondered why there are no great white sharks in aquariums, it's not for a lack of trying. Institutions all over the world have repeatedly tried to stick great white sharks into captivity. And while many people assume this always fails because great white sharks are simply too dangerous, that is simply not the case. There are so many reasons why great white sharks are unable to be held in captivity. Any attempt to keep a great white locked in a cage has ended disastrously. In aquariums from Las Vegas to Japan, great white sharks have been held in captivity and then swiftly perished. The longest a single great white has been kept in captivity was for 198 days. The quickest a great white has ever died when put in captivity is about 3 days. There are a few major problems, one of them being that the tank required to hold a great white would be way larger than any aquarium could handle. Then there is its diet to consider, and you also have to think about the behaviour of the great white sharks themselves and what they do in the ocean. Number 9. The Monterey Bay Aquarium Disaster Attempts to hold a great white shark in captivity started in the early 1970s. Major aquariums began to advertise great white sharks on display. However, they never survived very long in their tanks. They wouldn't eat, they couldn't swim properly, and after anywhere from a few days to a few weeks, the shark would be dead. Prior to 2004, the longest a great white shark ever remained living in an aquarium was only 16 days. But that all changed in 2004 when the Monterey Bay Aquarium in Las Vegas kept a great white shark, albeit a young one, in captivity for an astounding 198 days. But this was no easy feat, they had to design a special tank for the ocean animals. Plus, the shark was just a baby. It was only about 4 feet long, whereas an adult great white shark would be at least 15 feet long. In any case, the aquarium decided to release the shark after 198 days. This happened after the Great White attacked two other sharks that were sharing its tank. They weren't Great Whites, but it still attacked and killed them. Since then, the Monterey Bay Aquarium has tried again and again to keep a Great White shark, but it never worked. After they had to release their sixth Great White back into the ocean after it only survived 55 days, they ended their exhibition program in 2011. Number 8. They Need to Swim A big problem with having a shark in captivity is that sharks need to swim. In the ocean, sharks are constantly swimming all day long. They are nomadic and can roam super long distances in a single day. Obviously, they are not able to swim dozens of miles in whatever direction when they are living in a tank. And I'll tell you why this is a huge problem. Most sharks breathe by filtering oxygen from the water that passes through their gills. Most fish can do this by using their mouths. They don't need to be moving all the time, but with great white sharks, they must be constantly in motion for the water to enter their gills so that they can breathe. This means that when they stop moving, they stop breathing. This is why so many sharks that were held in captivity had an extremely difficult time. They would hit the glass of their enclosure so often that they developed sores from the damage. These beasts are not meant to be kept in a cage, they literally can't breathe. What do you think about keeping sharks in an aquarium? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more fascinating animal videos, we have lots more coming up. Number 7. Japan tried it again. Even though the Monterey Bay Aquarium put an end to their exhibition program in 2011, other nations and other aquariums continued to try and harness the power of a great white shark for tourist dollars. One of the most recent lessons came from Japan. It was back in 2016 when a fisherman caught an 11 foot great white shark in their net. The great white shark went from the fisherman's net straight into an aquarium in Okinawa. It was displayed in the Sea of Dangerous Sharks exhibit from between January the 5th 2016 and its death on January the 8th 2016. If you need me to do the math for you, that's a whopping three days of living in captivity. According to the press reports, the great white shark refused to eat and took a dark turn for the worse. As you can imagine, this sparked outrage all over the world, with an official representative of PETA saying that keeping the shark in captivity was wrong and cruel. Suffice to say, the Japanese probably won't be trying to do that again. Number 6. It takes a lot of water. You already know that great white sharks require an outstanding amount of water so that they can swim continuously to keep the oxygen flowing into their bodies. Because of this, you would need an unrealistic amount of water to keep a great white shark contained properly. It would require a fantastic amount of money, a miracle of engineering, and a cage more expensive than any aquarium is willing to purchase. Just as an example, the tank that was specially designed by the Monterey Bay Aquarium to hold their baby great white shark contained 1 million gallons of water and reached a depth of 35 feet. And this was only for a baby shark. 
What were they expecting to happen when the Great White grew to be 15 feet long? It wouldn't have even fit inside the tank even a little bit. In order to do this properly, you would need to create a shark tank the size of a small village. That way the shark could do laps at its leisure all day long without ever feeling like it was trapped. Number 5. Transportation is an issue. One of the biggest problems has to do with transportation. Don't forget, the only way to capture a great white shark is to do it in the ocean. You would actually have to go out into the ocean, somehow scoop the shark out of the water, and then drive it halfway across the country to whichever aquarium wanted to house the beast. As you can imagine, between the trauma, the displacement, and the funds it would take for such an expedition, it's just not worth it. Take the baby shark that was exhibited for 198 days in the Monterey Bay Aquarium, for example. According to the local news reports back in 2004, the shark was first accidentally caught by a halibut fisherman off the coast of Huntington Beach. The shark then had to be transferred to the aquarium's ocean pen, where it was closely monitored, and transferred yet again to the aquarium using a special 3,000 gallon shark tank on wheels. You can't just FedEx a great white shark. Number 4. French Aquarium and the Hammerhead Shark it's not only great white sharks that have a hard time being kept in captivity. In 2019, an ocean conservation group filed a lawsuit against a French aquarium because of the deaths of 30 endangered hammerhead sharks. This happened at the Norsica Aquarium in the French city of Boulogne-sur-Mer. They had initially acquired their hammerhead sharks from the waters of Australia, but they all died from fungal infections since being brought to the aquarium. This comes from the largest public aquarium in all of Europe. And it's especially tragic considering these sharks are supposed to live for between 20 and 30 years in the wild, but they only lasted 8 years in captivity. The hammerhead shark is on the red list of endangered species at the International Union for Conservation of Nature. And while the aquarium has defended its collection of the hammerhead sharks, conservationists were still extremely unhappy that such a thing was able to happen. Number 3. Great White Robots If you still want to get your fix of great white sharks, a new project is underway. A Hollywood robotics company is trying to replace sea life attractions with robots, including robotic dolphins and great white sharks that are 100% animatronic. This could potentially change the way animals are kept in captivity. The San Francisco-based special effects company named Edge Innovations is trying to revolutionise theme park shows in a time when more and more of the public cries out against the cruelty of keeping animals, especially wild animals like sharks and dolphins locked inside cages. The long-term vision is to fill aquariums with robotic sharks, dolphins and whales, allowing visitors to get a glimpse of 100% anatomically correct sea monsters, except that they are robots. The most famous project of the company was when they created free-swimming orca whale robots for the 1993 movie Free Willy. While this project is still in its developmental stages, it could be a huge step forward in the way we experience wildlife at the zoo. Imagine if they could reconstruct a megalodon to 99% realism and have it swimming around at your local aquarium, no different to watching the real thing. This could be the first step to a robotic Jurassic Park. Number 2. Keeping Great White Sharks Alive while some people may think the best way to see great white sharks is in captivity, it's actually better if we can just keep seeing them in the wild. The best way to see a great white shark is by going on an expedition into the ocean and being lowered into a shark-proof cage. But to do this, we need to stop fishing sharks and cutting them up for their fins. On the front line of the effort to conserve the entire species of great white sharks is the island nation of Taiwan, who in July 2020 formally announced a ban on fishing great white sharks. This comes straight from Taiwan's fisheries agency. The regulations require that all Taiwanese fishing boats are to release great white sharks back into the ocean if they are caught by accident. While this might not seem immediately related to great white sharks being kept in captivity, it's actually a great step towards ensuring they never get abducted from the ocean, sent across the world, and left in an aquarium to die three weeks later. If more countries adopt regulations like this, we can continue to see great white sharks swimming in the wild for years to come. Number 1 never seen at the zoo. Great white sharks are not the only animals that can't be kept in captivity. Because of the nature of certain animals and their needs, there are a handful of other creatures just like the great white shark that you will never see in captivity. One of the most notable is the mountain gorilla. Although many attempts were made in the 1960s and 1970s to capture mountain gorillas and breed them in captivity, it has never worked. Every mountain gorilla ever caught and stuffed into a cage has been affected by stress and subsequently perished due to disease. Two of the most exciting sea creatures, the giant squid and the narwhal, have also been impossible to capture. First of all, the giant squid is so elusive that scientists barely even get to look at one. 
so the chances of an 80 foot squid ending up at your local aquarium is basically zero. As for the narwhal, which is known as the unicorn of the sea thanks to its long tusk, it's also super elusive. Narwhals hunt in deep water and are hard to catch. According to a Canadian narwhal specialist, Pierre Richard, most researchers only ever catch a glimpse of a narwhal throughout their entire lives. While a narwhal can live for over 100 years in the wild, they die very quickly when stuck in captivity. You won't be seeing a unicorn of the sea at the zoo probably ever in your lifetime. Number 10. The Black Palm Cockatoo The Black Palm Cockatoo is believed to be the most beautiful cockatoo in the entire world. It's also an endangered animal in the wild, native to New Guinea, Aru Islands and a very small part of Australia. It's been considered a sacred animal and there are only about 3,000 of them left. They don't breed successfully very often, only about one egg every one to two years and they need a big hollow hole in trees that take a very long time to form, pretty much decades. They don't ever build their own nests, so ornithologists and the park services are working together to help them have their very specific habitat. These birds are famous for being hard to find in the wild, you can hear them but not always see them. Researchers have observed strange behaviour in the wild known as drumming. These birds will create tools for hours just to drum on trees. So far it seems like they just do it to make noise. They don't use it for hunting or gathering and there is no observable reward, so there is clearly much more to learn about this bird. You can bet that purchasing one of these birds is going to set you back thousands of dollars. They range between $8,000 and $16,000, so you better have a whole lot of cash lying around if you're thinking about getting one of these birds. But if you do get one, the Black Palm Cockatoo is known to be super affectionate and super needy. They are always wanting attention, and in return they will give their partner lots of love. What's interesting about owning a Black Palm Cockatoo is that it will probably outlive you. At a minimum, a properly cared for Black Palm Cockatoo will live for 40 years, but they have been known to survive for almost 100 years. This means that even if you get one of these birds as a child, it's probably going to live longer than you will. It's probably best to make sure your children or even future grandchildren are going to want to take care of this bird once you're gone. They also require a ridiculous amount of attention. You will need to spend time daily with your cockatoo, and if you don't, they will get destructive and resentful like any other intelligent bird that needs social interaction. Number 9. I Am Samani Chicken You probably wouldn't expect a chicken to be very expensive, but the I Am Samani Chicken is an exception. It's the most expensive chicken in the entire world. While most popular in their country of origin, Indonesia, this chicken has exploded all over the world as an ornamental pet. That means that owning this chicken is like owning a living decoration. And it's not hard to see why. If you are a lover of chickens, you will immediately fall in love with this beautiful bird. They are almost completely black, even having a black beak, black plumage, black meat, black eyes, black skin and black nails. And yes, even their internal organs and bones are black. What do you think? Would you spend a ridiculous amount of money just for a black chicken? They can go for between $2,000 and $3,000 in the United States, but are much cheaper in their native home. Interestingly, the only two parts of the chicken that aren't black are its blood and its tongue. Oh, and the chicken's eggs. It doesn't lay black eggs, it lays cream-coloured eggs, the same as other chickens. Raising these chickens can be extremely lucrative. What do you think about these chickens? What's your favourite bird? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more animal videos. Number 8. The Northern Cardinal A typical Northern Cardinal can go for around $800. That's not nearly as much as some of the birds on this list, but it's still pretty pricey for something that's just going to squawk at you from its cage all day. Northern Cardinals happen to be one of the most beloved birds in North America. It's even the state bird of seven different states in the USA. The surprising part is that northern cardinals are illegal to keep as a pet in the United States of America, but that doesn't stop the bird being ultra popular in Europe. They have excellent plumage, a pleasing voice and can live for longer than 20 years. If you want to raise a northern cardinal, sometimes known as a Virginian nightingale in the United States, you are going to need to get a special license from the state as a wildlife rehabilitator. The bird originally lived all over North America and as far south as Belize. They prefer living in park-like habitats and don't mind the presence of humans. And while some birds are slowly going extinct, the northern cardinal is actually increasing in population and spreading to many different areas, except for California, where its population is declining, possibly due to out-of-control fires. Number 7. Mountain Bluebird Another super popular bird in North America is the Mountain Bluebird. They typically live in prairies, meadows, sagebrush flats and pastures. 
In the wild, they typically nest at lower elevations in the winter and then head to higher ground in the summer, but they hate the desert. They cost about the same as a northern cardinal, but this is one bird you might not even need to pay for. You can likely attract it directly into your yard if you have the proper perches set up, and enough beetles, grasshoppers, fruits, seeds and grapes hanging around for the birds to eat. They also love to eat spiders, and so they could be a good way of keeping your yard clear of eight-legged freaks. A typical nesting box has a very good chance of attracting a mountain bluebird, so you might be able to save yourself $800 or more. These birds prefer dry cavities in an open field at least three feet off the ground. Try sticking a nest box in the middle of your yard and letting the birds come to you. According to All About Birds, the mountain bluebird will even reuse old nest cavities, so you might see new birds coming with each season. Number 6. Flame-Faced Tanager Another common yet expensive bird in the United States is the flame-faced tanager. Tanager birds come in a wide variety of species, including blue and yellow, blue and grey, scarlet, opal rumped and green and gold. There's even a black-faced tanager. And each type of tanager is a little more expensive than the last, with the paradise tanager costing upwards of $1200 thanks to its uniquely light green head and light blue underbelly. But the flame-faced tanager is my favourite. It costs somewhere between $900 to $1,000 and has a unique face that's been kissed by fire. They are found naturally in the eastern Andes of Colombia, in Peru and in Ecuador. They are small and have a bright reddish-orange face like fire that fades to a calm yellow. They also have ruffles of blue and green throughout their bodies with spectacular black and blue wings. Number 5. Flamingo Everyone wants to know how much a flamingo really costs. Flamingos are arguably the most popular bird in the entire world. But how much does it cost to upgrade that fake flamingo decoration in your yard to the real deal? The truth is not so easy to come by. There isn't exactly a market for selling flamingos. While a quick internet search will tell you a full-grown flamingo costs around $1,000, I can't help but feel that it isn't right at all. Even if it is, it's not like you can just call someone up and order a flamingo. These are considered wild birds and are not able to be kept as pets. There's a reason flocks of flamingos are only kept in zoos and in the wild. Flamingos live between 25 and 30 years in the wild, and up to 50 years in captivity. So unlike other birds, flamingos actually do much better when stuck in a zoo, but they definitely need a big space to roam. Flamingos need lots of room to run around, and they need the proper food. It would actually be more expensive to have a proper flamingo habitat than to purchase the flamingo itself. They are complicated social animals that require large numbers to operate properly. This is why you always see them in massive groups. A single flamingo in your backyard would be a very miserable thing. Number 4. Toucan Flamingos might be the most popular birds, but in terms of birds that you can actually own as a pet, toucans are definitely the coolest. There is a reason Toucan Sam is the mascot for Fruit Loops. But there is a lot to know before even considering purchasing a toucan. These are not like little cardinals that can be kept inside a cage in your living room. They are even more complicated than parrots. Oh, and yes, toucans are crazy expensive. We're really getting into the deep of it now. To start off, you will need an initial investment of at least $10,000 just to purchase the toucan. And that's only the beginning. They are expensive to feed. They are expensive to house because you need a massive enclosure that's bigger than most people's apartments. And you need to care for them constantly, which can be a very costly endeavor. Some interesting facts about having a toucan as a pet. They are super social. Having a single toucan would be like having a baby. You need to pay attention to it all day and be its friend. A lot of people don't quite understand how social and affectionate birds really can be. Don't forget that birds are the closest relatives of dinosaurs. They are older than you after evolving for millions of years, and some might say more intelligent. The best way to keep a toucan is to keep more than one, that way they can hang out with each other. This leaves you with a massive hole in your wallet, as it will take upwards of $20,000 just to buy a pair of toucans, and probably another $10,000 just to build the proper enclosure for them. Number 3. Hyacinth Macaw The Hyacinth Macaw is one neat bird. They are cobalt blue, incredibly vocal, super happy and extremely intelligent. Because of their huge size, they can be pretty intimidating for people who don't have a lot of experience with birds. Because of the yellow colouring around their beaks and around their eyes, they always appear to be smiling, and you can't help but love to look at them. The photos of this bird don't quite do its justice. It really is enormous, with heights of over 40 inches in length. That's almost 4 feet tall! Imagine a bird that stands up past your knee, depending on how tall you are. 
Originally hailing from the countries of Brazil, Bolivia and Paraguay, the hyacinth macaw is like the Great Dane of birds. They are super rare to see in someone's personal collection. You will probably only ever see one of these majestic bluebirds in a zoo. But if you really wanted to purchase one, it's possible to do so for around the same price as a toucan. They cost upwards of $10,000. And yes, they are also an enormous commitment that you will end up needing to support for upwards of 30 years. I know, birds basically live forever. Number 2. American Goldfinch Let's tone it down for a second and talk about the American Goldfinch. This is one of the most common birds and it is found easily all over North America. You can easily trick these birds to come into your yard and don't even need to buy one, though they are widely available for sale at just a few hundred dollars. It's a far cry from an expensive toucan, but expensive nevertheless considering you can just put out a feeder and enjoy the golden birds fluttering through your yard every year for free. The American Goldfinch is the state bird of New Jersey, Washington and Iowa. Number 1. Racing Pigeon As always, I have saved the best for last. The most expensive bird in the entire world is a racing pigeon. That's right, those annoying birds that poop on your head as you walk out of the train station are more expensive than flamingos, macaws, parrots and toucans. According to a news report from the BBC, a Belgian racing pigeon sold in 2013 to a Chinese businessman for a ridiculous price of $400,000. The pigeon's name was Bolt, and it was reported that the new owner was going to use Bolt to breed more racing pigeons. Even more interesting, the buyers out of 9 out of the 10 most expensive pigeons sold at this auction were either from China or from Taiwan. Whatever they're doing over there, they love expensive pigeons. But why are racing pigeons so expensive? Well, it's just like another sport like horse racing. It's a rich man's leisure activity, with super wealthy people selling and trading the world's fastest pigeons. The same man who sold his pigeon to the Chinese businessman at the auction sold the... Number 11. The Serval The Serval is a beautiful wildcat native to the central and southern African grasslands. They are smaller, slender cats with extra long necks and long legs, so they are also known as giraffe cats. They have to be careful of leopards, wild dogs and hyenas who are out to get them. While they only weigh about 40 pounds max, proportionally they have the largest ears of any cat. As the San Diego Zoo says, if we had ears in the same proportion to our heads as servals do, they would be the size of dinner plates. They are quick and limber, able to hunt all types of prey. Some people even have servals as pets, but before you even think about it, be aware that this is a wild cat and not domestic. While cute, they aren't necessarily cuddly and have tons of energy. They play hard and like to mark their territory. They might destroy your home while having fun. Number 10. The American Wirehair the American Wirehair Cat is one of the rarest house breeds in the world, and yet they don't actually look that unique. They are typical of their ancestors, which were the original cats bred to keep rodents out of barns and houses, but they have a peculiar coat of hair. The breed first appeared in 1966, when a kitten was found in a litter that had a wiry look to it. The kitten was then sold to a breeder, who tried to replicate the wiry appearance of its hair. Through all this breeding, we have now ended up with the American Wirehair. This breed is becoming more and more popular in the United States, especially as a show cat. People love it for its curly fur. It doesn't look alien or strange, it's just a little unique, with a little more personality than your typical house cat. And as a companion, American Wirehair cats are pleasant, relaxed and exceptionally affectionate. Number 9. Turkish Van The Turkish Van has been around for centuries. These cats are playful and energetic, and they have extremely unique tails that make them very desirable cats. They almost have raccoon tails. Turkish van cats are bigger than normal, they don't have very many medical issues, and they're surprisingly good swimmers. This is why they are also known as the swimming cat. The Turkish van has an extremely soft coat of hair, which happens to be naturally resistant to water because it's so silky. This is one of the least stressful cats to give a bath to. The unusual markings are what people really desire with the Turkish van. The cat will typically have a completely white body with a bit of colouring on their face and tail. And talking about their tail, it's the bushy, squirrel-like tail that really makes them stand out. It's also not uncommon for this type of cat to be born with one blue eye and one amber eye. The Turkish Van is one of the oldest cat breeds and dates as far back as 5,000 years ago, living mostly in the central, mountainous regions of Asia, in what is now Turkey. But it wasn't until the 1950s that this cat was brought from Asia to Europe, and not until the 70s that the breed finally landed in the United States. Number 8. Maine Coon 
The Maine Coon is one of America's very own cat breeds. It hails from Maine and dates as far back as the beginning of the 19th century. They were first popularized as mousers, farm cats, and cats that lived on ships to try and hunt down all the disgusting rats. These cats are absolutely enormous. If you've ever seen the photos online where somebody is holding a Maine Coon and it looks bigger than its owner, it's not a lie. This cat holds the record as the world's longest house cat, with the official record holder coming in at 48.5 inches, half an inch longer than 4 feet. His name was Stewie, and he was a grey tabby Maine Coon. This type of cat will not reach their full size until between 3 and 5 years old. According to Cat Time, there are some rumours that it was the Vikings who initially brought the Maine Coon's ancestors to North America. But others even speculate and say that the cats are descendants of the unique long-haired cats that belonged to Mary Antoinette, and were sent to America in advance of the Queen before she died, as she had hoped to escape to America. But the truth is that it was likely sea captains who brought back long-haired cats, who then mated with local American short-haired cats to create the Maine Coon. I've heard they make amazing pets. Do you have a cat? If not, what kind of cat would you get? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more fun facts about animals. Number 7. Bengal Cat The Bengal Cat is probably the most desirable rare cat in the world. Everyone wants one of these exotic house cats. They are huge, agile, and have extremely muscular bodies. If there was any house cat that belonged in the jungle, it would definitely be the Bengal. However, these cats are a lot friendlier than any kind of jungle predator. They are super affectionate with humans, and they have a high level of energy that makes them super fun to play with. This means they need a lot of space, and someone who can match their ferocious energy. But where does this interesting cat get its leopard print coat from? There's no denying the Bengal looks like a wild cat ready for the hunt. So far as the story goes, these cats were crossed between an Asian leopard cat and a domestic short hair cat. They were first created by a breeder in California completely by accident. This was somewhere between 1950 and 1960, and after even more extensive breeding, the International Cats Association eventually granted the breed experimental status in 1983 and fully recognised them in 1991. These cats have been nicknamed the Rolls Royce of felines, with a British woman allegedly paying over $50,000 for a Bengal cat in the year 1990. So yeah, these are definitely some pretty rare felines. Number 6. Mintskin I bet you haven't heard of the Mintskin cat. These little kitties are super bizarre. They obviously look a lot like a Sphinx cat, but they aren't quite the same. They have a lot more fur than the hairless Sphinx. The Mintskin has super short legs with a stocky body, sort of like a corgi, and they are completely hairless on their belly. However, they do have patches of fur often on their faces, ears, legs, nose, and tail. This makes them a little cuddlier than your typical Sphinx, which is great because Mintskin cats are affectionate and very outgoing. Where did these weird cats come from? Well, they originated in Boston. It's what happened when a Sphinx was crossed with a Munchkin, then later crossed with a Burmese and Devon Rex. It took two years of constant breeding to get the Minskin cat, but it finally happened in the year 2000. And by 2005, there were around 50 Minskin cats in the world. They are not currently recognised as an actual breed, since there are very few of them in existence. But they are of course a unique breed of cat, and one of the rarest since there are so few of them living today. Number 5. Devon Rex The Devon Rex is another rare cat with an unusual appearance. They have a rather triangular head with large eyes and extremely big ears. Some people say the Devon Rex looks a lot like a pixie or an elf in cat form. They also have extremely unusual hair. They have a distinct lack of fur in some areas, with the rest of their coat being soft and curly. This is a cat you should never brush, as their hair is so fragile that it can break off completely. They also have super fragile whiskers that often get broken. This cat originates from England. It started with a Cornish Rex and a straight-haired barn cat mating, and they gave birth to a cat named Curly, who is believed to be the very first Devon Rex. The Cornish Rex is the greyhound of cats because of the way they run, with the same galloping motion of its canine counterpart. These cats are famous for their jumping abilities. They love to hang out in trees and soak in the sun. Number 4. La Perm Cat The La Perm Cat is also known as the Dalles La Perm. The very first La Perm litter was born in 1982 in a cherry orchard in Oregon, making this breed one of the newest and rarest. It's best known for its distinct appearance, having tightly curled hair around the neck, ears, and tails. Because the La Perm is a direct result of a random genetic mutation, they can be found in a variety of different colours and patterns. But you most often see these cats as ginger, tabby, or tortoise shell. 
As with most cats, the Lapern breed is super affectionate with their human family. They do well in households with or without children. Because their ancestors were barn cats, Laperms are highly active. They like to exercise and play on a daily basis, and after a good session of running around the house, they enjoy cuddling on the couch and relaxing. What's really unique about the Laperm is that they have minimal vocalization. They don't meow very much, unlike some cats that just wandered the house meowing for absolutely no reason. Number 3. Peter Bald. In my personal opinion, Peter Bald cats are the strangest cat breed in the world. There is something way too human about their face, although others claim they're very dog-like. These cats originate from Russia and are fiercely loyal and extremely affectionate. This type of cat is notorious for following humans around the house, meowing constantly and living for a ridiculous amount of time. A typical Peterbald cat will live for at least 15 years, displaying a high level of energy and friendliness throughout its entire life. You'll often find yourself tripping over it as it tries to weave between your legs. The cat is extremely rare, but its history is somewhat limited. From what we know, the breed first came into existence in 1994, when a Russian breeder crossed an oriental shorthair cat with a Don Sphinx cat. The result was this absolutely bizarre creature we now call the Peterbald. If you haven't guessed by now, the Peterbald got its name because of its extreme popularity in St. Petersburg, Russia. And even though it only came into existence in 1994, it's already recognised by the Cat Fanciers Association. It remains one of the rarest purebred domestic cat breeds in the entire world. There are not many of them around, and there are even fewer in the United States. Number 2. Sokoki The Sokoki is another lifetime cat, living longer than most dogs. But it is extremely rare. It's rarer than most of the rarest Ferraris. As of 2020, it is believed that there are currently less than 30 Sokoki cats currently registered in the United Kingdom, and even less in the United States. However, this number is likely to grow exponentially in the coming years. Sokokis are one of the best cats for someone who wants a lot of affection. These cats tend to form an incredible bond with their owners, quickly becoming everyone's best friend once they have settled into the family. But what makes these cats so unique? They look pretty similar to a typical barnyard cat. However, they have an extremely defined face. They have almond eyes, large ears and superior cheekbones to almost any other cat. They have an almost refined look to them that makes them like royalty among normal cats. What's even more interesting is that they were not created specifically through breeding. This type of cat is naturally occurring in the coastal areas of Kenya, near the city of Mombasa. While almost extinct in the wild, hopefully more and more breeding will boost their numbers. Number 1. Karakal While not a house cat by any means, the Karakal is still an amazing feline. And they have one of the most interesting histories. The Karakal was once trained to hunt birds in Iran and India hundreds of years ago. This is because the Karakal has a fantastic jumping range, able to leap into the air and knock down 10 to 12 birds in a single go. Even though some people have referred to the Karakal as a desert lynx, it doesn't actually share any attributes with anyone in the lynx family. The hope is that caracals can eventually be converted into house cats because of their relatively small size. They are only about 40 pounds, standing around 20 inches at the shoulder. And while they are still wild animals and not recommended at all to be purchased as pets, they are close to endangered in the wild. According to Big Cat Rescue, there are only around 170 of them currently in zoos around the world. This makes them one of the rarest cats. Number 10. The Blue-Eyed Forest Dragon There is no animal quite as unique as the forest dragon with bright blue eyes. It looks like something out of Japanese anime. It has the most striking shade of blue that you have ever seen in any animal's eyes, never mind a lizard. Even though I called this a dragon, it's actually an anglehead lizard, but the name dragon does seem appropriate. This animal lives on the tropical islands of Indonesia and Malaysia, in ancient rainforests believed to be around 130 million years old. These are some of the oldest forests in the world, so it's no surprise that so many unique specimens live here. The blue-eyed anglehead lizard is one of 16 types of lizards scattered throughout Southeast Asia. They are recognisable because of their big heads, their extremely colourful scales, and their extravagant spines. But not all of them have the beautiful blue eyes that this one does. It really is quite unique. What would you do if you saw an animal with these types of eyes? Would you try to capture it to be a pet, or would you run away as fast as possible? It really looks like something out of a horror movie, but it would be the coolest animal to keep in a terrarium in your house. Let me know what you'd do by writing a comment down below. After that, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. 
There are loads of amazing videos coming out all of the time, and you won't want to miss even a single one. Number 9. Glass Frog There is a frog right now somewhere in the rainforests of Central America and South America that has a very unique superpower. It's known as the reticulated glass frog, but it should really be called the slimy translucent frog. It's only about the size of a quarter, and it's almost invisible. You can actually see the bones and veins inside the frog through its skin. And if you look from the underside, you can see all of its internal organs through its belly. You can even watch its little heart beating as it sits on a leaf. According to National Geographic, scientists still aren't 100% sure why the frogs have translucent skin. They think it could have something to do with the pattern on their backs. It could be meant to resemble a big clutch of eggs and might help males to protect their offspring by confusing potential predators who are trying to steal their eggs. But they just don't know. What they do know is that the males are super protective over the eggs after the female lays them. The female lays the eggs underneath some leaves using a weird jelly-like substance and afterwards the male will stand on guard duty 24 hours a day until the eggs hatch. That's some serious devotion for any animal in the wild. This frog would win Father of the Year for sure. Number 8. Sun Bear Everyone who lives in North America is familiar with the black bear, the grizzly bear, the polar bear and of course the brown bear. But wandering through the forests of southern China is one of the most unique animals in the world, and definitely the most unique bear. It's known as the sun bear, and it's extraordinary in its behaviour, its appearance and the fact that it exists at all. For such a big beast, this bear spends most of its time sticking its giant tongue underneath logs and slurping up insects. They're pretty incredible in that they live to be about 25 years old, and they can go their whole lives eating not much except for bugs and berries and honey. They also spend a huge amount of time sleeping inside tree canopies and on branches. Sun bears get their name from the giant patch of golden fur on their chest, which kind of looks like a sunburst. Some say it looks like a rising sun. And while they might look pretty big in pictures, sun bears are actually very small. According to National Geographic, the male sun bear can only grow to be about 5 feet and around 150 pounds, making them the smallest bear species in the world. They're only about half the size of an American black bear, and black bears aren't even that big. Number 7. Markor Goats are all unique. Anywhere you go in the world, you see goats, and they are always a little weird and a little suspicious. I never quite trust a goat standing sideways on a vertical mountainside with its shifty goat eyes. But the most unique out of all the goats in the world is the markor. The markor is the biggest out of any wild species of goat, and they also look the strangest. They have broad hooves and enormous spiralling horns that can grow to be about 5 feet long. That means they have horns that are bigger than some grown humans. The goats live in herds of anywhere between 30 and 100 females and are only joined by males during the mating season, of course. Their name, Markor, actually means snake eater in Persian, likely because of how they easily kill snakes by squashing them with their oversized hooves. You used to be able to find these unique goats living throughout Kashmir, but now they are only in some parts of Central Asia, primarily in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. Unfortunately, they are currently considered an endangered species. Number 6. Red-Lipped Batfish I'm not sure if there is anything on Earth more unique than the red-lipped batfish. Not only does it look like it's always judging you, but where did it get all that lipstick? It's arguably the most unnerving aquatic animal to look at. It's not ugly necessarily, but there's just something about it that really doesn't sit right with me. The red-lipped batfish is typically found near the Galapagos Islands. They only grow to be around 10 inches long, they have a shape like a squished burrito, and they have the most vibrant red lips you have ever seen on anyone other than your grandmother. According to The Verge, the reason this fish has such luscious lips is currently unknown. But scientists do believe it's probably to attract a mate. And I suppose in that way, the red-lipped batfish isn't so far from humans. Just imagine if you were a red-lipped batfish and you stumbled upon another one of your kind with the reddest and brightest lips ever. Of course you would want them as your mate. If you're not creeped out enough already, that pointy thing sticking out of the middle of the fish's forehead, right between its eyes, what you probably thought was its nose, is actually a horn covered in little hairs. It uses its horn kind of like an anglerfish to attract prey so it can gobble them up with its bright red lips. Number 5. Japanese Spider Crab the Japanese spider crab is not as frightening or as creepy as the red-lipped batfish, but it's probably the most unique crab in the world. It obviously gets its name because it kind of looks like a spider. It's also the biggest crab on Earth. It has a maximum size of 12 feet across, and it weighs an astonishing 44 pounds. I shouldn't have to tell you how ridiculous that is. 
Imagine the tallest person you know and then stack two of them together. That's how big the Japanese spider crab is, but it's super light because it has long and spindly legs just like a spider. The good news is that they live at the bottom of the ocean, inside vents and holes at a depth of around 2,000 feet. You're unlikely to encounter a massive Japanese spider crab on your next diving adventure, so don't worry. Have people ever hunted and eaten these massive creatures? You bet! They are actually considered a delicacy, which makes sense, considering one of their supremely long crab legs would be enough to feed even the hungriest seafood buffet enthusiasts. They are being protected nowadays because overfishing is a concern when it comes to maintaining the species and reducing the risk of extinction. Number 4. Sunder Flying Lemur The Sunder Flying Lemur, despite its name, is not actually a lemur. It can't even fly. But it can glide like you wouldn't believe. This creature is native to the forests of Indonesia, Thailand and Malaysia. It has an outstanding gliding capability of up to around 300 feet with only losing about 30 feet in elevation. You might argue that's even better than flying. Who needs wings anyway? It has been reported by Australian Geographic that one particularly talented critter managed to glide for a distance of about 446 feet. If you need some help, that's about the length of nine buses. So, if the Sunder Flying Lemur isn't a lemur, what is it? Well, it's a species classified as a Kaluga, which is probably something not many people have heard of before. There are only two known species in the world, making them both extremely unique. There is the Sunda Flying Lima and a slightly larger one found only in the Philippines. The closest thing to compare them to would probably be sugar gliders, though the flying lemurs look stranger. They have giant eyes that look like they were glued on. Number 3. Pink Fairy Armadillo The Pink Fairy Armadillo is not only an extremely unique animal, but it's also one of the cutest animals ever. It's almost like a tiny dog that fits in your hand and has a pink shell. I mean, this thing is pink. But it's not actually a fairy. It can't fly and it can't cast spells. What it can do though is burrow underground and hide there basically forever. The pink fairy armadillo is one of the most elusive animals on the planet. It's the smallest out of all the armadillo species and it spends its whole life inside the earth burrowing this way and that, hunting tiny invertebrates and chewing up plant roots. Because of its elusiveness, the pink fairy armadillo has barely been studied and there is very little known about it. This armadillo is believed to live mostly in the deserts of Argentina. And unlike its armadillo cousins, the pink fairy's shell is not fully connected to its body. It's not the armored powerhouse that other armadillos are. Instead, it has a very thin shell attached by a thin membrane that connects it to the spinal column. The reason it's pink is partly because its shell is so thin that you can see the blood vessels underneath. This basically means the pink fairy doesn't rely on its armor like other armadillos do. It's going in a whole different evolutionary direction, making it super unique. Number 2. De Brazza's Monkey The De Brazza's Monkey lives in the forests of Central America, from Cameroon to Ethiopia and Angola to Kenya. I understand that all monkeys are a little weird, and each is unique in their own way, but this one is a special kind of strange. First of all, the monkey was named after the Italian explorer Pierre Savonin de Brazza, who lived between 1852 and 1905. Not only is the monkey named after him, but so is the capital of the Republic of Congo, the city of Brazzaville. That must have been one impressive explorer, but his namesake primate is particularly memorable. As for these monkeys, what makes them unique is that they kind of look like surprised old men all of the time. They are pretty husky, weighing up to about 12 pounds. And like most monkeys, the females only give birth to a single young. As a defense mechanism, the de Brazza monkey will completely freeze, which is maybe why they have that shocked look on their face all of the time. The de Brazza monkey always looks like an old person who got away from the seniors' home and doesn't quite know where to go next. Number 1. Sea Pen Not all creatures are as exciting as monkeys, armadillos and bears. For example, just take a look at the sea pen. A person might argue that every living thing in the ocean is unique, and that's true, but the sea pen is an exceptional creation. It doesn't even look like it belongs in the ocean. It looks like a giant quill pen ready to be dipped in ink so that you can write someone a letter during medieval times. This graceful creature lives on the sea floor, it boasts a wide variety of colours, and it grows to be around one and a half feet long. Sea pens live at shallow depths of around 225 feet, and you can find them off the coast of California and north to Alaska. But you probably want to know what a sea pen really is. Each sea pen is actually made up of a colony of polyps, which are small things, sort of like anemones. First, what happens is the primary polyp will lose its tentacle, and it becomes the stock of the sea pen, which anchors it to the sandy ocean floor. Then, other polyps come along and form their branches off the sea pen to help it to grow. 
Each branch has a specialised function, with some polyps helping the collective to feed by catching plankton, while other polyps reproduce, and others ventilate the growing colony by moving water in and out of special organic canals. Basically, the sea pen is a miniature city occupied by tiny polyps. You could even think of it as a single creature built from the remains of other creatures, like a weird underwater flower Frankenstein monster. Number 10. Vomiting Water Pufferfish are famous for their ability to inflate and their somewhat slow and clumsy swimming style. There are about 120 different species of pufferfish, and since they are kind of slow, their only means to deter predators is to make themselves as big as possible. They don't do this by sucking in air, but by quickly ingesting huge amounts of water and turning themselves into a big ball that nobody is able to swallow. People familiar with pufferfish, or that have seen them in an aquarium, will start to notice that sometimes their pufferfish will squirt water at them. But why? Are they playing? Are they scared? Some people think it's a feeding response. They might squirt water in exchange for food. Both puffers and triggerfish will also blow water on their food with powerful jets that turn the food over. A famous meme came out with a pufferfish seeming to vomit water. On March the 6th, 2019, the website Tokyo Web published an article entitled Non-Toxic Pufferfish in Hot Spring Water. The article included a photograph of the fish spitting up spring water. It's hard to know what exactly was going on, but it's probably not good since the pufferfish has blown itself up and is now releasing water. Hopefully it's not going to get eaten. Pufferfish will also of course have to release the water at some point, when they get caught so fishermen will hold them in their hands until they release the water, making a sort of vomiting sound. Number 9. Lazy Parent Cuckoo Birds It's time to meet the planet's laziest and perhaps most clever mother. She is of course the cuckoo bird, and she is probably one of the most creative parents alive. The phenomenon is known as brood parasitism, and basically it means the cuckoo bird is a parasite. You see, when the cuckoo bird is about to lay eggs, she goes in search of another nest to leave her eggs in. She has to go on scouting trips to find a nest of another species she knows will be a good parent for her baby birds. Once she targets a nest, there is basically nothing the surrogate parent can do to stop her. Cuckoo birds are incredibly well adapted to being brood parasites, and it works in this disturbing and creative way. When the cuckoo birds hatch in their step-parent's nest, they do it a little bit earlier than the other eggs. This will make them stronger, louder, and bigger than their would-be siblings. Because the most demanding baby birds get fed more, they have a stronger chance of surviving. It can be hard for the mother bird to tell which of the tiny birds is hers, and so the cuckoo chicks will get treated the same as the other babies. In effect, the cuckoo bird's babies will be stronger than the other babies in the nest, so they will get fed more and the other babies will perish. It's a bird-eat-bird -bird world out there, and the cuckoo mother is not going to put another species' babies ahead of her own. Sometimes, the mother cuckoo bird will even poke holes in the eggs of the host's nest when she leaves her own, ensuring only her babies are the ones to be fed. Now that's a really sly and underhanded strategy, but the animal kingdom is a rough and wild place. Number 8. Backward Running Mole Rats Yes, mole rats are some of the most disgusting creatures on the planet. The naked mole rat looks like a failed lab experiment that lost all its hair. They have unsightly, wrinkly skin, yellow fangs and beady eyes that almost look villainous. However, these animals do some incredible and very strange things. Their evolutionary traits are absolutely amazing. Not only do they live their entire life underground without the need for much oxygen, but they even have excellent hygiene. Inside a mole rat's burrow, you will find an actual bathroom, which is something that you can't say for most animals. They dig a specific tunnel strictly for use as a toilet. If that's not hygienic for an animal, I don't know what is. Compare that to most other wild animals, who just go whenever and wherever nature calls. Additionally, naked mole rats can run backwards just as fast as they can run forwards. Imagine breaking into a full sprint completely backwards with the same raw speed you get when running forwards. It's simply unbelievable. For just one more strange habit of the naked mole rat, they can move their incisors independently of each other, just like a pair of chopsticks. Again, imagine being able to move your two front teeth individually and separately. And if those weird facts weren't enough, there's still one more. You might not believe it, but apparently they can barely feel pain. These critters are some of the toughest around, and they don't even react to being burned with acid. Could you imagine that kind of set of abilities? It seems almost superhuman. Which of the naked mole rat's talents would you most like to have? Let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. Number 7. Vengeful Crows Crows have been harbingers of darkness for a very long time. There is nothing spookier than hearing a crow call in the dark of night while you're walking alone. And while ravens may be larger and more ominous than crows, crows have a very strange habit of seeking revenge on those who have done them wrong, making them far more terrifying than any other bird. This all has to do with the crow's exceptional memory. 
pros can recognize a human face. That's right, it doesn't just know that you're a person, but it knows your face and who you are, and it probably even knows where you live. That's more than any government intelligence agency can say, and crows are significantly more likely to hold a grudge. They don't forgive or forget. If you have ever been rude to a crow perhaps, by throwing a rock at it or trying to kick it, the crow is going to remember you. The downside for you is that crows can communicate with other crows, and if the crow recognizes your face and perceives you as a threat, it will let the other crows know. It might even get other crows involved to heckle you in an attempt to make you leave the area. This could result in you basically being harassed by a murder of crows. Why do you think a group of crows is called a murder? Well, it's not for being nice and friendly, that's for sure. Number 6. Rock Eating Crocs Crocodiles like to eat rocks. Yes, it's a pretty strange habit. Rocks don't have any nutritional value, and they certainly don't get digested very easily. I certainly wouldn't eat any, and I hope you wouldn't either. There are not too many animals that would go out of their way to actually eat rocks, but while this is a strange behaviour for this prehistoric lizard, crocodiles don't eat rocks for the taste. They eat rocks because the stones help them with their basic digestion, according to research. By eating rocks, the crocodile will help crush and grate its food already in its stomach. Human stomachs don't work the same way, so don't try this at home. However, this strategy is especially good for crocodiles who eat very large meals, or animals with tough bones and shells, like turtles. The rocks help break everything down within the croc's stomach, so it can be easily digested. Plus, having rocks in the crocodile's stomach will make it feel full. At least that part makes sense. With a bunch of rocks clunking around in there, it's going to be a full belly no matter how much actual food makes it through. Though I would be worried about not getting enough nutrients if I were the crocodile. Number 5. Chickens and the T-Rex There are some unlikely cousins, but family is family. This one is a little less of a strange habit and more of a strange relationship. When you think about the infamous Tyrannosaurus Rex, who do you think its closest relative is? Is it the elephant? Is it the crocodile or the Komodo dragon? Perhaps a shark or an iguana? According to researchers who study genetics and evolution, the chemical structure found in proteins preserved inside the Tyrannosaurus Rex bone most closely resembles the chemical structure of a chicken. Basically, dinosaur DNA equals chicken DNA. The closest relative to a T-Rex is a modern day chicken. When you eat scrambled eggs for breakfast in the morning, you are eating the closest living thing we currently have to real life dinosaur eggs. This strengthens the long held theory the dinosaurs are the ancestors of birds and that through the past 70 million years the ferocious Tyrannosaurus Rex has slowly evolved and some of its descendants eventually did turn into the clueless clucker, the hungry and slightly obnoxious modern day chicken. And yes, this is based on real scientific studies published in real scientific journals. And yes, the actual science is a bit more complicated than a slow evolution. As different environmental conditions changed the world around the dinosaurs, some of their descendants gradually got smaller and smaller, gained feathers over scales, and started clucking instead of roaring. Now that's a family reunion I couldn't imagine going well, could you? Number 4. Vampire Butterflies There is nothing more peaceful than watching beautiful butterflies fluttering around the garden in the springtime. Butterflies are the very epitome of purity and kindness. Or are they? If you have never ventured into the darkest depths of the jungle, you have probably never seen the dark side of butterflies. While these vividly colourful insects are certainly appealing to look at, they are actually wild insects just like the rest of them. Some species of these fantastic creatures are also vampires. That's right, butterflies, like mosquitoes, will drink other animals' blood and not think twice about it. Of course, butterflies can't actually cut you open to drink your blood, but because of their nutrient needs, butterflies are greedy to suck up moisture anywhere they can get it. This includes the blood from your wound and the tears from your eyes. You may have never thought of it before, but your blood contains loads of minerals and nutrients that almost any living organism would be happy to eat. Butterflies are one of these organisms. Not only will they drink your blood, which is full of proteins, but they will even attempt to consume nutrients from feces. Disgusting, but there are nutrients everywhere, and animals who want to get at them. Number 3. Blind Platypuses Of course, you knew there was going to be some discussion of the weirdest animal wandering around today. And of course, it's the platypus. Platypuses are unquestionably strange animals. They are mammals, but they lay eggs. They look like beavers, but they're not, and they swim through the water like happy otters. Pictures of platypuses on the internet often make them look much bigger than they are. But in reality, platypuses are only about the size of a house cat. They have dark brown fur, they are mostly waterproof, and they swim through the water with their eyes closed. You would think the platypus would keep its eyes open while swimming through the water so it could see where it was going, but it doesn't. It has a strange habit of submerging itself in water and then closing its eyes and ears while it swims around hunting. It actually uses its bill to hunt, since its bill has electroreceptors that can pick up small electrical signals sent by edible animals as they move around underwater. This allows the platypus to find worms and shrimps and eat them even while it swims around with its eyes squeezed shut. If the tail of the blind platypus feeling its way towards dinner doesn't make any sense to you, you're not alone. 
I thought this was baffling, but now I want a duck build platypus as a pet. Would you want one? Let me know in the comments section below. Number 2. The Assassin Bug The Assassin Bug is the coolest bug you have never heard of. With a name like that, it has to be doing something unique. This bug is half assassin, half mercenary, and 100% menacing. Not only does the assassin bug kill and eat its prey, but it stacks their corpses on its back and walks around with dozens of dead bugs stacked on its shoulders like some kind of gruesome trophy. Like an alien in a horror movie, first it impales its prey, then it eats them from the inside out, and lastly it attaches the hollowed corpses to its back. And while you would think even the notorious assassin bug would only need to carry a few corpses on its back to make its point, it actually piles an outstanding number of dead victims onto its back to scare away possible predators. There is no better armour than your own victims strapped to your body, and no better deterrent for potential enemies. This also serves as a sort of camouflage for the assassin bug. The assassin bug typically eats termites, ants, bees, and anything else it can sink its fangs into. But the weird behaviour of wearing its victims earns it the top place as one of the strangest and most rugged creatures on planet Earth. What do you think? Is this trophy hunter the toughest, most terrifying creature for its size? I think so, but leave a comment and let me know your opinion. Number 1. The Tongue Thief The Cymothoa exigua is a parasite that literally steals tongues. Not only does this parasite steal tongues, but it actually eats tongues and replaces them as itself. Does that sound unbelievable? The details are even stranger. Basically, this parasite will target a fish, infiltrate its gills, latch onto its tongue, consume the tongue, and then replace the fish's tongue with itself. This absolutely bizarre exchange goes on without the fish becoming aware of its victimhood, and it ends up leaving the fish with a fully functioning tongue. The parasite acts as the fish's tongue to grind food just like a normal tongue would. This is the only example of a species in the animal kingdom replacing the function of an organ. Think of it like if a parasite crawled into your body, ate your lungs, and then started to breathe air for you. It's absolutely bizarre. According to marine biologist Rick Brusker, the only fish that gets its tongue completely devoured and replaced as an organ that operates 100% is the rose snapper. The parasite does not steal other fish's tongues, draining their blood and replacing them, but the rose snapper gets the worst of it. I don't know whether to be more disgusted or impressed. Number 10. Tree Kangaroo There are a lot of strange animals roaming around our planet. And one of the strangest has got to be the tree kangaroo. The last thing you expect from a kangaroo is for it to be hanging out in trees. But in 1990, a brand new species of tree kangaroo was found in the mountains of Papua New Guinea. It's now known as the golden mantled tree kangaroo. It has a unique chestnut brown coat, a pale belly, and gold fur on its back. This is a strange yet beautifully unique marsupial, and there are not many of them left. In fact, the reason these animals weren't even discovered until 1990 is because scientists estimate that about 99% of their population has already been eliminated. According to the World Wildlife Foundation, the tree kangaroo has adapted to life in the branches, kind of like a monkey, using its short legs and extremely strong forelimbs to climb. In fact, this weird marsupial is a strange cross between a kangaroo and a wallaby, and a kangaroo and a lemur. The entire family of marsupials that kangaroos are a part of actually did evolve from ancient animals that lived in the trees millions of years ago. They slowly evolved to live on the ground into what we now recognise as the Australian kangaroo. Have you ever seen a kangaroo in real life? Was it in a zoo or in the wild down in Australia? It's supposed to be a bad idea to go up to them and bother them. They could kick you so hard it breaks your ribs. Let me know about your most shocking encounters with wildlife in the comments below. Then, if you like this video, remember to subscribe to stay on top of all the new videos in store. If you don't want to miss any of them, you'd best subscribe. Number 9. Penis Snake This is a real animal, and hopefully YouTube won't hold this against me. This might be the grossest thing you are going to see today, but try to keep it together. It's an animal. The penis snake looks exactly like you'd think it does. It's an unusual species, with a rounded head, a thick and cylindrical body that is unusually fleshy, and yes, it looks very phallic. But it's not actually a snake. It's an extremely rare amphibian with no limbs. According to the Huffington Post, the penis snake was first discovered in Brazil in 2011 while engineers were working on a dam. They found six of these weird creatures all at the same time. The species has been identified by a biologist as being an aquatic animal thought to breathe through its skin. It has no legs and no lungs, and in the past few years there has been very little learned about this unusual animal. They only managed to collect six specimens. One of them died, three were released back into the wild, and the remaining two were kept for study. Apparently, their closest living relatives are salamanders and frogs. 
The animal likely eats small fish and worms, but the truth is that the horrible ugly penis snake is just another mystery of the Amazon we don't know much about. As we destroy more and more of the jungle, we find more and more bizarre animals. Number 8. Speckled Bear This weird monster may look like something out of a fantasy horror movie, but it's actually just an adorable speckled bear. Her name is Dominga, and she was so lonely in the zoo she lived in that she lost all of her fur. This is what a bear looks like when it's naked. According to the president of the Animal Defenders International, the poor bear had just one strip of hair on the back of her head and going down her back, which left her with something like a mohawk. She may look scary, but Dominga is anything but intimidating. She's 14 years old and has been through quite a lot. She's a Peruvian speckled bear who was originally trafficked from the Amazon rainforest by evil animal traffickers. She was supposed to be sold as a pet or into the entertainment industry, but she managed to get rescued and sent to a zoo. But the zoo didn't turn out to be a very good home. The bear got incredibly lonely, the environment wasn't sufficient for her needs, and the bear was too intelligent to be kept in a cage like that. The only good part was that Dominga had her sister with her throughout the whole experience. But then her sister died from a terrible accident and Dominga got horribly depressed and lost all of her hair. But there is some good news. She was recently rescued by the Animal Defenders International and brought to an ecological reserve located in the Amazon rainforest where she can now live out the last bit of her life in a better environment. Number 7. Venezuelan Poodle Moth The Venezuelan Poodle Moth is one weird customer. It looks like a moth with hair like a poodle. It has long fluffy ears, extremely fluffy white wings, and big black eyes. It was first discovered and photographed in 2009, and most professionals believe it to be a new species. It was documented by Dr. Arthur Anker during a trip to Venezuela, but it didn't get much attention until just recently. The poodle moth is so extraordinary that many people thought the photos were doctored or altogether fake. But the confusion around the moth was because there were photos being posted of similar moths and not of the actual Venezuelan poodle moth. But let me assure you, the poodle moth is very real and it is very fluffy. Dr. Arthur Anker is notorious for visiting tropical rainforests and other exotic places all over the world, taking pictures of very real and very incredible animals, then placing the photos on his Flickr page. As of now, there is not a whole lot known about the poodle moth. Perhaps enterprising young researchers will go down to Venezuela and find out more about this and other remarkable creatures that live beyond the reach of civilization. Number 6. The Saiga Antelope Let me introduce you to one of the world's weirdest antelope. At first glance, this looks like a creature that belongs somewhere in the Star Wars universe. They have the strangest faces, not only of any antelope, but almost of any animal. Because they have adapted to the harsh conditions of the grasslands of Central Asia, one of the last remaining wildernesses in the Earth, the antelopes look incredibly different from all their distant cousins. They have huge bulbous noses that seem to sag, and they live in big nomadic herds. Their weird hanging nose is thought to be used for filtering out dust during dry summers, which makes sense because they live in a very dusty area. Unfortunately, the Saiga antelope used to live in herds that numbered in the millions, but like everything else they are rapidly declining in population. There are now just a few thousand of these animals, critically endangered and living in Kazakhstan. In case you didn't know, Kazakhstan is the ninth largest country in the world, and it has one of the largest unused land spaces, where you can still find wild antelope and wild camels. Number 5. Echidna The echidna is one of the weirdest animals roaming around on the earth. This thing is a bizarre mixture of a porcupine, a bird, a kangaroo, and a reptile. First, it definitely looks like a porcupine or a hedgehog. It has spikes growing out of its body that look dangerous to touch. On the other side, it has a beak for a mouth just like a bird. But underneath, it has a pouch like a kangaroo. But it lays eggs in the same way a reptile does. What the heck is this thing? Another name for the echidna is the spiny anteater. If you haven't guessed it by now, these solitary mammals are native to Australia and Tasmania, where so many of the weirdest animals on planet Earth live. They aren't very big, they only weigh about 10 pounds, but they are some of the neatest and most docile creatures in the world. And according to Wired, their spiky spines are actually modified hairs, with the fur between the spines acting as insulation. Number 4. Okapi How do you feel about a mini giraffe with a zebra pattern on its rear end? Well, that's exactly what the okapi is. It's a hoofed mammal that lives in the giraffe family, but is an absolutely bizarre species most people don't even know about. This weird giraffe hybrid lives in the forests of the Democratic Republic of Congo, and they are very close to being extinct. They were first discovered in the rainforest in 1901 by a British explorer, who then sent scraps of hide across the world to the British Museum. Even though the okapi is related to the giraffe, it's obviously much shorter. It also doesn't have the same colour pattern. 
It has an almost purple coat of fur, with its legs and buttocks looking exactly like a zebra. It really makes you wonder what exactly evolution was thinking when this thing turned out. Is it halfway to becoming a zebra, or halfway to becoming a giraffe? Or is it some type of weird hybrid that emerged when some very unusual cross-species mating occurred? What in the world is going on with the Okapi? Seriously? Number 3. Indian Purple Frog There is no stranger frog roaming the earth than the Indian Purple Frog. As the name suggests, they live in India. And because of their limited distribution, they aren't obviously roaming all of the earth. But they are definitely strange. They spend most of their lives living underground, only surfacing for two weeks out of the year to mate. They don't even come out of the ground to eat food. They mainly sit underground eating termites that come near them and waiting for that one time of the year to mate. What a life that is. It's like sitting in your house surviving on pizza delivery and only going out once a year to try and find a partner. It's the ultimate lazy lifestyle. And the Indian purple frog even looks like a loafer. It's fat, purple, it has tiny little eyes, and it doesn't look like it could move very far if it wanted to. In fact, it looks like it's always bloated from eating way too much. Its head is way too small in comparison to its body, and it has a really long snout that sticks out of its face a little too far. And yeah, it's a super dark purple. Really, it's cute in the same way that a pug is adorable. It's just so strange looking, it's impossible not to love it. How nature comes up with this stuff, I will never know. Number 2. Narwhal There is one animal in the sea that is stranger and more fascinating than most others, and it's called the narwhal. You could also call it the unicorn of the sea, as it is so nicknamed. This is because most narwhals have an extremely long spiral tusk sticking out of their face. The narwhal tusk, which is generally found on males, is actually a very long tooth that has sensory capabilities of around 10 million nerve endings. Some narwhals even have two tusks, while other narwhals don't have any. Imagine if one of your teeth stuck out 10 feet from your face and had more nerve endings on it than one of your fingers. It's pretty incredible. And what's even more incredible is that when you look at a narwhal, it doesn't even look like it has a face. It almost looks like a fat black seal with a javelin extending from its nose, with no eyes or mouth. It could be the narwhal that is actually the closest thing planet Earth has to a real-life unicorn, and it's even possible that a fossilised narwhal was the inspiration for the mythical creature itself. Although to be honest, unicorns look a lot better than the chubby blob that lives deep in the polar north. Yes, narwhals do typically live in the Arctic waters, which is why they are so rare to see. According to the World Wildlife Foundation, narwhals live in Canada, Greenland, Norway and Russia. Number 1. The Yeti Crab The strangest real-life animal of the day is, like many of the weirdest looking creatures, a denizen of the depths. That's right, this very strange animal roams around on the bottom of the sea. This animal is a mixture between a yeti and a crab, and it's called a yeti crab. Surprise, surprise! While not particularly impressive, they don't have giant horns and they don't really do that much, these crabs are still very cool. They live at the very bottom of the ocean, in and around hydrothermal vents, which spew out boiling hot water from underground fissures. Most sea creatures wouldn't be able to live in such a habitat, but the yeti crabs really don't mind. These weird creatures were discovered first in 2005 and named after the mythical abominable snowman because of their hairy arms and white colour. They spend their days farming bacteria as a food source and basking in the extremely warm water around the hydrothermal vents. What a way to spend a life! But then again, nature has a place for all different kinds of life forms here on planet Earth. Which of these strange creatures is the most fascinating? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon. Out of the 10 animals on this list, how many had you never heard of until watching our video?